Oh, no. Okay. Um, make sure it's red light on the whole time, too. a lot of basic uh, dog training skills, yeah. like the sit and the down and the go to your mat. And then we graduated to do more life training skills because ultimately, if he can pass the test in the classroom but he can't pass the life test, what good is it anyway? Absolutely. So we practice things like park it, where when I stop, you stop. And that kind of gets him in a mode where he's prepared to wait instead of prepared to go. And then we also did the this way, which is like for a quick turnaround. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a cue, we're gonna change directions. Pay attention to what's going on. So um, I noticed also when I was working with Major that he's a really mellow guy. Yeah. And so I'm sure when you started noticing some of the reactivity issues, it had to be pretty shocking. Yes, it was. And <laughs> <laughs> did you notice them right away or was it? We noticed them, um, no, he, after he was two years old. So the first two years he was not really that sensitive. Mm -hmm. um, but I became pregnant and we had a baby. Mm -hmm. And um, around that same time we also had a dog who moved into our building. Um, who started, I think it was put him on edge a little bit. So mm -hmm. I don't know if there was a specific incident that occurred mm -hmm. that started it, um, but I think then it started to escalate. I think there were a lot of changes happening in his life, yeah. and that started the behaviors. And I thought that was so awesome, how you were proactive when the baby's arrival was coming, right. that you wanted to make sure that Major fits into the family scene. And yeah. It's a smooth transition. Yeah. And that was just, I don't know, it just touched me that you were so kind in that way. He's a good dog. He's you part of the family. You are a good dog. <laughs> um, and I actually don't really care for the term reactivity because it implies that there are some dogs that have reactions and others don't. Yeah. But in actuality, anything with emotions is going to have a reaction. Yeah, absolutely. And whether it's human or whether it's dog, there's going to be some people or dogs that have reactions that are more visible than others. Right. And I think because Major is highly emotional, when he has a reaction, it's going to be more visible. It's a big reaction. There are other dogs who may feel the same way, but may not necessarily express it in the same way. Right. It's kind of like when the humans are startled, like something comes around the corner, and you go jumping back, oh my gosh, you startled me. Right. And I think that's Major's reaction. Yeah. But what happens for him is that instead of jumping backwards, he lunges forward. And instead of speaking human, he speaks canine. Right. So that's <laughs> where the lunging and barking come into play. Um, I also think that even before this other dog came in the picture, there were some surprises that maybe happened to him in the past Probably. That, um, that weren't good surprises. Yeah. And I think that they were so disruptive to his usually Zen personality that he started adopting a stance of being um, maybe like a little more alert yeah. and um, a little more hesitant. And then when this new dog came in the picture, that just kind of heightened that sensitivity another level. But um, I also think, like I said, I think that was kind of already there. But now when he goes out, he has kind of a heightened blood pressure. Yeah. And that stress response is preparing for a preemptive fight or flight situation. It may or may not happen. Right. But because he's already on high alert, if something does come up, he's already primed for reactivity. Yeah. Hi, sweetie. You're doing so good. <laughs> Um, and I also think part of that is also because Major is just super smart mm -hmm. and I think he wants to figure out, um, determine the cause of some kind of unusual sounds or things that are happening. And he wants to figure out how can he avoid situations that in the past have maybe made him vulnerable to attack or where he mm -hmm. felt threatened. Um, but when he's in his home, I notice he feels very safe, very comfortable. He's in that fortress of solitude. Mm -hmm. But I think he's just kind of being true to his namesake and he's like a, a soldier who's had a little bit of PTSD. Yeah. And so now before he goes out in the battlefield, he wants to plan a strategy. Yeah. And I think because you live on the fourth floor, where you're away from a lot of the traffic noises, and you're at the end of the hall, mm -hmm. where there's not so much foot traffic, when he goes out that door, all these things stand out to him that much more. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so what we did to try and combat some experiences from the past is we rehearsed life having a much more relaxed posture. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like meditation. The meditation just uh, prepares you to be still amidst the chaos of life, but it doesn't really change the chaos of life. Mm -hmm. But by rehearsing those positive thoughts and having a more balanced approach, when life comes at us, we're responding from a situation where we're more centered rather than being on the edge. So in a more scientific terms, 
neurons that fire together eventually wire together, which means that both in dogs and humans, that if you practice the same thoughts over and over and you have a successful outcome, your brain is gonna clear the neural pathways for you to respond that way again and again and faster and without having to think about it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same way if you drive someplace over and over and then you mm -hmm. go someplace just slightly different, there's a good chance you're gonna miss your off ramp. Mm -hmm. And in Major's case, that's exactly what we wanna do. When there's the opportunity to get off onto Snapville, we want him <laughs> to just keep driving straight on through to Conville because that's where he's used to going again and again. Yeah. So they say that bravery and fear are actually the same thing. It's just two different ways to respond to that same emotion. Mm -hmm. And so we tried to give Major uh, the option and to recognize that he has a choice in how he can respond to those emotions. Mm -hmm. Because if you're anxious and bad things happen, you're just gonna be more anxious. But if you're confident and then good things happen, you're gonna become more confident. Mm -hmm. So to build his confidence, we've practiced everyday life situations like walking the hall or riding the elevators or hanging out in the lobby. And then when we did that, nothing bad happened. And we also walked around and investigated what's lurking behind the corners or what's down the hall. And when we did that, it turned out there's no scary dogs there waiting to attack. It's just more hallway and more doors. And also, um, at one point, there was some construction going on mm -hmm. where they were renovating one of the units. Mm -hmm. And so I asked the workmen if they could kind of prop the door open so that Major could see what's going on inside. Mm. And when he looked inside, we were having some snacks, watching the workmen bang away on their tools. And then the next time we walked by there, he realizes that there's nothing to fear. So he can walk by bravely and realize that it's just the humans doing their weird human stuff. <laughs> But um, I noticed in this building too, when you rock, walk around, the architecture is kind of tricky mm -hmm. because you have narrow hallways mm -hmm. and you have blind corners and you even have these little jogs in the wall mm -hmm. so that sometimes when something is directly in front of you, you can't see it coming at you. Right. Um, also, they have the elevator doors which just open suddenly and then there's a dog or there's a person right. and you have no warning whatsoever that that's coming. Right. And I think that Major is just trying to make sense of his world mm -hmm. and within the human confines of of the landscape, it can be kind of tricky for him. Mm -hmm. So also, from an evolutionary standpoint, it makes sense that if you can't determine where this unusual sound is coming from, or sudden, suddenly something appears or moves, you want to put a picture to it pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Because in the wild, this could be something that you could potentially eat, or it could potentially be something that's going to eat you. Right. And so you can take the dog out of the wild <laughs> and put him in an urban setting, but that wild instinct is still going to be in him. Uh, and that's actually a good thing. That's good, right? That's a good thing because <laughs> if his ancestors didn't have that instinct so strong, they would end up inside the belly of some predator right. instead of making more labradoodles. So <laughs> we can all enjoy the labradoodles. <laughs> hmm. um, so in order to continue to build his confidence and also to maintain that success, we just want to keep him safe mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that he has the space he needs to feel comfortable. I think we talked a little bit in the past about some proximity issues that mm -hmm. he has. And I think that's really normal. And also just maintaining a buffer zone so that he doesn't feel cornered. Mm -hmm. Because generally, when Major comes and sees something, once he determines friend or foe, he's fine. Mm -hmm. But it's that moment when he's unsure, and he's on a leash, and maybe his back is against the wall. And in those kind of fight or flight situations, flight just no longer is an option for him. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is we want to make sure he has choices. Because mm -hmm. if he doesn't have that flight option, then the only option is to come out lunging and barking. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to avoid. Right. So um, do you have any questions so far about anything? That's... Uh, no, it makes sense. I guess, you know, sometimes it seems like uh, it's hard to figure out. Like it seems like we're in a safe environment. And I know you've practiced with him in our building. We have a lobby and you've practiced mm -hmm. sitting there with him, watching all the dogs and people and everyone come and go um, and just this morning we were sitting and having just a quiet time I'm sitting in a chair major sitting right next to me and we're very calm and a dog that actually lives on our hallway he doesn't see super often but a dog he knows came by and you know I was just sitting there didn't put my guard up mm -hmm. and he started barking mm -hmm. and to me that was sort of surprising because it felt like he still had a really good perimeter around him mm -hmm. so it was surprising that he would bark um, how can I avoid those kinds of situations where I feel like we're in a pretty safe space? Um, you know, we didn't have a lot of space behind us, but we had plenty of space in front of us between that mm -hmm. other dog. How can I help him feel safe there? Is it just making sure they're always treats? <laughs> it <laughs> is be... part, part of that. I think also part of it could be other things that are just going on. If his yeah. anxiety levels tend to be a little high, yeah. he's going to react in ways that yeah. he wouldn't otherwise. 
and it's hard to know what's going on inside him. Right. You know, that it may be something that happened before. Also, when the stress levels go up in a dog, uh -huh. it can take sometimes an hour, two hours before those stress levels uh -huh. go down. So sometimes when something happens, and you may not think anything of it that happened an hour ago, right. and his stress level is a little elevated, but he's not showing appearance, right. then when something happens, like Could I said, he's, kind of, primed, reaction. he's okay. kind of primed to have that reaction a little quicker. Okay. And I have seen him in different situations with the same dog, like you said, uh -huh. where in this situation, right. he's calm, but in this other situation, maybe not so calm. Right. But the best thing, like I said, is if you give him the space, he doesn't have the ability to make contact. Right. And I think that's the most important thing okay. right there as well. Um, but we do have some Zen games that we've Great. been practicing that Great. you can play with Major. Okay. And I think they're going to help build focus and help keep him a little more centered. Mm -hmm. And in situations where you need to divert his attention, they're good ones. Okay. So um, one of my favorites is what I call the vow of silence, where we just mm -hmm. take a little treat here and um, you keep them away from you. And as soon as he makes eye contact, you hand him the treat. But you don't have to say anything at all. You are so good. Sometimes you look at nice. <laughs> yes. Yes. And this just basically teaches him to um, focus away from distractions, mm -hmm. keep his attention on you, because ultimately you're the tree. Okay. We also have the touch game, and we mm -hmm. practice that a little bit. So touch, touch, touch. So where's my tree? <laughs> <laughs> but the more he practices that, the better he's going to get at it. Yeah. And then you can do it either, even from further distances away. Right. But the good thing about that is wherever the nose goes, the eyes have to follow. Mm -hmm. So if you see a distraction, and you want to divert his attention, this is a good way to do it. Okay. We also practice some, like a doggy yoga. Mm -hmm. Come over here. Can you sit? So we put him in the sit position, and then I like to take off his collar. There you go. And then I just scratch his neck, and he shows off his little crane pose. You got a little crane pose to show off? <laughs> show off your crane pose. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And this one's good too. Because it's a great uh, life reward. Uh -huh. So if you don't have a treat, you can right. give him a quick neck scratch. He likes that a lot. Yeah. I think it also has a calming effect. So that's kind of a winner all the way around. Oh, right. But all these are really good because they're super fun. Right. They just take a few seconds, so you can pretty much do them anywhere. Uh -huh. As the kids get older, they can eventually play these games with Major too. Right. They're probably good for their hand-eye coordination right. as well <laughs> as they get older. <laughs> Um, but we do have some treats and things. I actually have a couple treat jars. Those treat jars, I'm going to leave with you. Oh, great. And that way they're handy in case you have those opportunities for a Zen moment. Right. I would put one maybe in the kitchen uh -huh. so that when you're microwaving a meal, right. there's an opportunity to have some Zen moments. Right. Or maybe like on the coffee table or near the TV. Right. So when you're watching TV and there's a commercial, there's an opportunity for a Zen moment. Okay. Or when you seem to relax on this mat, reward him for just being still and choosing mm -hmm. to be calm instead of choosing to be tense. Right. Or like here when you're working, yeah. you can bring them in here. And when you're uploading or downloading a file, yeah. there's a Zen moment that you can have with them. Yeah. And then I also brought, let's see here. I brought these treats, <gasps> which are great. Oh, wow. I have some of these in my pocket. He and loves these. <laughs> oh, you, you yeah. have these already. He okay. hasn't had the medicine ones, though, so he's, this oh. will be great. Well, these are great because um, they can be broken up into little pieces. Mm -hmm. They don't make your hands messy. Right. And then they're human grade, too. So if you or your kids want to have a little snack major, you can really? certainly <laughs> share them. It's just jerky, basically. <laughs> wow. It's jerky. And so um, you are so good. So we have those. And I would probably put those in some of the jars, place them around. Great. Um, we also have a little roadside assistance kit here. So when you're out on the road, when you're out and about, Major. we have these treats too. Look and at this. This is something that um, I would probably attach it to his leash. Uh -huh. So that way, when you go out, you have the treats handy and ready. Yeah, that's and great. It's just kind of like driving a car. When you drive the car and you're ready to go for a spin, mm -hmm. you bring the keys, you bring the gas. This is the keys. Here's the gas. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's great. We've never had a treat bag, so that'll be oh, awesome. It'll make it yes. much easier to remember. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, I would attach the leash, so okay. that way it's just always handy. You know, when you go for the walk, these things, there's like some little potty bags, too. So now you're Perfect. all ready to all go. All together. Um, what are some other things I want to discuss? Oh, I also want to touch 
on some safety issues. Now that the children are here, yeah, it's really good, not just for major, but just all children should be educated on mm -hmm. how to act around dogs. Right. Because the kids that learn how to interact with dogs appropriately become adults that know how to interact with dogs. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the major things with major or any other dog is that if the dog's eating or it has something in their mouth, mm -hmm. never disturb a dog. And if you do have to approach the dog because he's got a child's toy in his mm -hmm. mouth, or if he's got a ball and you want to drop it, mm -hmm. you always have to bring a treat with you. Mm -hmm. And you exchange the treat for whatever he has in his mouth. Right. And you tell him to leave it and wait for him to drop it. But you never want to grab it straight out of his mouth. Right. What if a, a kid wants to feed the, like, the dog with put food in their hand? Is that okay? Oh yeah, that's right. fine. That's fine. It's just when he's got possession of something, right. you don't want to take possession right. of it. Okay. But feeding is great because it shows him that when a hand approaches, good things come out of that hand. Yeah. It's not something to be scared about. Okay. Um, another thing, and I see this quite a bit, is you never want to approach a dog that doesn't have its owner. Like all the time I see this on the street where the owner just runs in the coffee shop to you know, get mm -hmm. something inside. They leash their dog up to a parking meter, mm -hmm. and that dog is sitting in kind of a vulnerable position. Mm -hmm. They're unsure because their owner's not there, and they're tied to this pole so they can't escape, and mm -hmm. a lot of times there's a car or a barrier behind them, mm -hmm. and we know from Major, when you approach a dog like that, they're already in kind of an uncertain position. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure your kids never just go up to a strange dog mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Also, if they are passing a dog that's unfamiliar on the street or in the hallway, you want to teach your kids that they should remain quiet and that they either want to keep their arms folded in front of them like this mm -hmm. or to the side. Because what happens when kids are squealing and waving their arms around for a lot of dogs, that can trigger a prey instinct. Mm. And so a lot of times the dogs, uh, or the people who get bitten tend to be kids instead of adults. And it's not because the dogs are choosing kids instead of adults, mm -hmm. but a lot of times it's because the kids don't know how to act around the dogs. Right. And so the dogs are kind of like, oh, look at this thing that's squealing, waving its arms. It reminds me of birds or rabbits or something right. else like that. So you want to be careful about that. And then also, if you see a dog with the owner, you want to teach your children, always ask, may I pet your dog first from a safe distance? And when the owner says yes, you want to approach the dog slowly. No loud noises, no sudden movements. Same thing. Okay. Um, what else was there? Oh, and then also... This is true for adults, for kids, for major other dogs. Anytime you see a dog fight, you never want to stick your hand in. It seems like a lot of times people do that because the automatic response, stick your hand in and stop it. Mm -hmm. But that's how humans get bit. Dogs generally can resolve these things on their own, right. and there's, there's not usually a problem. A lot of times it's display for dogs too, mm -hmm. so that they can, like for major's case, he's barking and lunging to say, get away from me because I don't want to have an interaction with you. Mm -hmm. Not because he's preparing for that interaction. Right. So you want to keep him safe like that. But if he's in the middle of that lunging interaction, not necessarily fighting with another mm -hmm. dog, but if he's in that lunging, like barking, what is the cool it, how, how do you calm them in the moment? The best way is to create your own distraction. So you can turn around real quickly, mm -hmm. or if you can move him away from that thing. He's basically trying to say, I need some distance because you're scaring me. So if you can create that distance for him, mm -hmm. then he doesn't have to create that distance for himself. Right. So a lot of times if you see something that may be a situation, you're just going to want to, exactly. this way, turn around, let's go another way. Right. It's great too in this building because you have little corners that you can go down. Mm -hmm. and when you go down that little corner, there's the zen opportunity, right. touch, or yeah. you know, focus on me, or let's give you a little neck scratch right here, right. and try and calm them down, and then it's generally best if you can wait for the thing to pass. Right, because and then it's at the dog park when they're doing their thing, just let them... Just let them do their thing, they're calm. generally playing. Yeah. Um, Major's really great too, he's used to being in an off-leash setting, mm -hmm. and so I think another thing is if you do encounter other dogs, you want to avoid prolonged readings mm -hmm. because it's kind of unnatural and it creates a barrier of frustration mm -hmm. because they can't communicate with dogs in their normal dog ways. Mm -hmm. And especially for Major, because he's used to interacting with dogs in that off-leash setting, mm -hmm. that can be a sense of frustration mm -hmm. for him as well. Mm -hmm. um, I also wanted to cover that Major's not really a, a tug kind of guy, but you know, behavior changes throughout your life. Mm -hmm. So if you do encounter like tug games, if you're having tug games with him or any other dog, you want to make sure you have side-to-side -side motions instead of back and forth. Because if the dog readjusts his grip and you're going back and forth, your hand can wind up in the mouth. 
Whereas if you go side to side, it's more likely that if there's a readjustment, it'll be an air snap. Oh, okay. So all of these things are great, like I said, for adults, for kids, but especially for your kids because the city is so dense with dogs, mm -hmm. and not all of them are going to be like major. And so it's important that they understand that right from the get-go. Um, but other than that, it's up to Major now to make some good choices and to stay great. And I feel pretty confident that he will. Yeah. You're a good dog. And it's just been an awesome experience working with Major. Oh, thank We've you. We've both learned so much in the process, and I really can't thank you enough. Oh, I mean, you make him feel like a see. That's right, is. too. You make him so happy. He knows where to look for you. <laughs> so when there are places where you go in the building, he'll go over and sniff and see if you're there and look for you. So it's very sweet. He's had a good... He really cares about you. So sweet. Yeah. Likewise, Major. <laughs> likewise. You're a good dog. You're a good dog. Yeah. And I think, too, sometimes with the Labradoodles, they just get kind of misunderstood because there are these traits. Right. Like how they're so highly emotional, and they live intensely in the moment, and they get so excited. Right. And on one hand, that can be a bad thing because... For reactivity issues, it spirals things up really quickly. Right. But at the same time, it just makes them the funnest dogs ever. Yes. Because they're <laughs> so excited and they have so much energy and they're just yeah. so like happy to see you and I just love it. I just love it. I'm a big fan of you for you. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You're a good boy. <laughs> You're a good boy. So I also have for you a oh. little graduation present. Wow. Let me take the paper <laughs> off. That's no good. <gasps> Is this up your alley? Enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. He's going to love that. Awesome. Do I bring it on your mat, Major? So I'm going to take. Over here. Let me go 